A while ago, I came across this article from The Economist called Imperial Borders Still Shape Politics in Poland and Romania. The article shows us the election results of four elections, two in Romania and two in Poland. And through them, we can see that the old borders of the Austro-Hungarian and German empires almost perfectly match the difference in the areas where each party or candidate was the most voted. Now, obviously, correlation doesn't mean causation. Two statistics can coincidentally match without that meaning that the results are influenced by one another. There's even a website that shows how that is the case by showing us weird correlations that obviously have no relation to each other, like this one of the divorce rate in the US state of Maine matching the per capita consumption of margarine or the per capita consumption of chicken versus total US crude oil imports. But this Economist article made me think. Because unlike divorce and margarine, the fact that election results match old imperial borders makes some sense. Because the fact that specific regions belonged to one nation or another in the past changes the way in which those areas developed, the way people think, the religion they follow, amongst other things that influence the way people live today and the way they vote. So I decided to look further into it and search for other situations like this to understand if old borders do in fact still impact countries today. So let's take a look at a few specific cases of countries with specific regional differences, election results or otherwise, that match old borders that existed in those areas. Starting with the ones the article mentions, Poland and Romania. From 1795 to 1918, Russia, Austria and Germany controlled what is today Poland. And while the borders are gone today and all these areas are part of a unified Poland, the old divisions are still visible on the ground. You can clearly see the different results in the areas that used to be a part of the German Empire compared to the rest, which were ruled by Austria and mostly Russia. The election results perhaps summarize the differences, which add up to people living in different realities and therefore voting in different ways. According to the article, on the ground, paved Prussian roads dissolve into gravel at old border crossings. From the air, the former Habsburg and Russian territories look like a patchwork mosaic of small farming plots, whereas the West is divided into the sprawling fields designed to facilitate mechanized agriculture. Because the three empires that previously controlled parts of Poland, Germany, Russia and Austria, developed differently and at different paces. The West was part of Germany, which was rapidly industrializing and growing its railway network, while the East was Russian and mostly agricultural, even feudal in some places. In 1900, what is now West Poland had incomes five times higher than the East, and this income gap has not yet been resolved. And of course, people's socioeconomic reality impacts the way they vote. Russia was Orthodox, Austria was Roman Catholic, while Germany was Protestant, something that also impacts the population. Even though Poland was created in 1918, it was again occupied and divided both during and after World War II, and those occupations also impacted modern reality. Relocations from Soviet-occupied land to areas they won from the German Reich were, for example, a relevant change. Then Romania, where the situation is similar, although not as visible as in Poland, and quickly changing. The former borders of another old empire, Austria-Hungary, seem to impact the modern election results of Romania. After World War I, the Treaty of Trianon broke apart Hungary, and the Habsburg possessions in today's northern Romania were given to the country itself. The ownership of these territories by the Austro-Hungarian Empire saw thousands of Hungarians settle in the area, especially in Transylvania. I talked about this in the previous video even. While North Romania was partially under Habsburg rule up to 1918, South Romania was under Ottoman control until 1878. The different realities these regions and its people lived in during decades is certain to have impacted the way they developed and the way those people's descendants now think, live, and vote. In the West, the more liberal candidate got more votes in the 2014 election, while the left got more in the East. But while Poland's imperial borders consequences seem to be lasting, Romania's are not only not as visible, but also beginning to change due to new events. The majority of people leaving Romania to other EU countries are from the East, and this will perhaps remove the effect of that region being a specific way due to its past rulers. But then again, the reason why they are leaving is mostly due to the sub-development of these regions which is arguably still, at least in part, a consequence of those who ruled the areas before and those old borders. And later on, Germany itself is also an example. In a book called The Shortest History of Germany by James Haas, 
by the way, one of my favorite books, the author makes the argument that East and West Germany have been a reality throughout all history. And while the divisive line may have changed, there have always been differences between the two sides of Germany, depending on who has ruled them. From the areas which were a part of the Roman Empire, to the lost territories of the German Empire, to the division between West and East after World War II. That author, in part, argues that South Germany is different from the North, because it was partially ruled by the Romans, and that those roots are still impactful today. The territories they lost, which were part of their empire, still have German heritage today, as is visible in the case of Poland we just saw, but also perhaps in Alsace-Lorraine for France, and some territories of Lithuania or Russian Kaliningrad, although I couldn't find information about those. But let's focus on East-West Germany because that separation is where differences are most visible today. The division of Germany lasted from the end of World War II until 1990, and 40-something years seem to have been enough to have long-lasting effects. Although we must mention that the West has always been the heart of German development, while the East was more rural, even at the time when the German Empire was united and a reality. During World War II, the Americans considered the lesser-known Morgenthau Plan, where, among other ideas, the rural region would be permanently occupied because, according to them, here lies the heart of German industrial power. So while the East-West division may have contributed to these differences that we're about to take a look at, it wasn't the exclusive cause. But still, when we look at electoral results, for instance, East Germany is the area where extremist parties get the most votes. When we look at average wages by county, old East Germany has tremendously lower values. Regarding religion, the old Soviet-controlled area is, in its vast majority, non-religious, while the the rest is religious, either Protestant or Catholic, something that without a doubt impacts voting results. In all the indicators I could find, the East only surpasses the West in one thing, vaccination rates, likely a lasting consequence of the Soviet Union's vastly successful vaccination programs. There's a bunch more indicators on how Germany is still divided in two, I might do a full video about this if you're interested. One other example of how old borders are still visible are, oddly, colonial empires. The whole point of these differences, and the fact that the old border lines still show them, is the fact that there was an occupation by another ruler of that territory. And of course, if they occupied and rule it, they most likely imposed their policies, their culture, their language, and their customs, without regard for the borders that we have today. Several areas of the world, which are today their own countries, at times with different borders than the colonial ones, still have visible effects of this. The most obvious being the fact that the colonizers' languages are still vastly spoken throughout them. English, French, Portuguese, and Spanish are, in a lot of cases, commonly spoken among many countries that have no other cultural proximity. The British Raj is a great example of other factors that still impact the countries today, with the most tangible legacy of the British being the railway, the colonial architecture, and the Anglo-local cuisine. While railways are less present in Pakistan, in this map of the British Raj, we can see how the network spread through the three countries, because it was one British colony together. That old imperial border encompassing the three nations is still visible today through the railway network. And throughout the world, I'm sure we can find many other examples of countries whose old borders are still visible today through many factors. If you know any other interesting ones, leave a comment below and let me know. So, those are a few examples of countries where the old borders of the regions still impact modern reality. Either because of differences in development, industrialization, the governing regime at the time, the religion they followed, or the population changes they saw take place. More and more, these differences should fade away and the impact of old borders disappear, but it could also continue a domino effect of continuously being an impact. For instance, if Eastern Poland having been a part of the Russian Empire makes it today vote in a more conservative conservative way, and I'm not saying that it does, then those conservative local governments might impact the population to continue being conservative for decades or centuries to come, impacting future reality and policies. And the effects of old borders might continue to be relevant through their own future consequences. Or they might be replaced by new situations, such as the migration in Romania, replacing or at least reducing the imperial borders legacy as the main impact in the difference between regions. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want to catch future ones, and leave a comment below with your opinions and thoughts about this. I will see you next time for more general knowledge.